camp's way ahead of where he was last year at this time. There's no question about that. I mean, it's, you know, as you would expect, he, you know, has a, a good year of experience under his belt and is able to start the process uh, at the beginning um, and not be in a catch-up mode like he was last year. Um, I mean, he was really just starting at this point uh, in last season, but, you know, he's, he's well ahead of that just from the year of experience and from the you know, the succession of building blocks that he's been able to, to stack up like all the players have that, you know, have been here since the start of uh, the OTA. It didn't make me feel any type of way because he was the right pick, you know what I'm saying, in my opinion. And, you know, he was the best player available and that's what the NFL draft is for. Um, as far as, you know, having any, any chip on the shoulder, like, I mean, stating the obvious I don't need too much to get myself going let alone you know that happening and it's no disrespect to to Mac it's no disrespect to you know Bill and, and his decision I, I support it 110 percent because there you still have to do what's right for the organization what a difference in presentation from Cam Newton to Bill Belichick Bel as Belichick was talking it struck me he looked like a guy who has the flu and got himself together just enough to go to the doctor's office to get checked out. That, that was the vibe that he had. Uh, yeah, you're, and, you're right. It does look like that. You're right. That's why he's the <laughs> all-time curmudgeon, though. I mean, that is why. I mean, who knows with Bill? Knowing Bill, he might have sat up, He might have slept on the couch the night before, even for mini camps. I mean, he, he's that kind of guy. I mean, it's just when it's time to work in New England, they're not looking into the mirror to see how their hair's combed. They just get after it. And they grind, and that's who they are, and that's why they're that's why they're New England. That that that, pec that picture though suggests all sorts of unpleasant. <laughs> oh, you could have a lot of fun from his body. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, I mean, definitely. Good God, all right. Uh, so, how about a little fill in the blank mini camp style? The Cam Newton versus Mac Jones competition will be what, Chris? Good for Cam Newton. I think that's the thing I'm going to look at at uh, just from that little you know fill in the blank. I think it's the best thing for Cam Newton to have that guy that's right there that he knows is the future, is going to be, you know, Johnny type A quarterback and be on every detail in the world. And I think that's going to push Cam Newton to mentally be all over things. And of course, you know, on the field, physically be all over them too. So I think this really ultimately, even though it might not like long term be the best for Cam. I think in a lot of ways, this is going to be the best for Cam to make the most of himself for 2021. I'm going to say it's good for the Patriots. This is the first time they've sure. had anything like this in years, and it sets a tone of competition throughout the organization. It's almost like the Seahawks mentality where it's compete at every position except quarterback. We don't want competition there. But when you have a full-blown competition at quarterback and you see that, yes, the best are going to play – that, that may make some of these other guys step up and try a little bit harder sure. and develop, and it, and it helps lift the whole thing. I saw some tweets yesterday from beat writers who were at the minicamp practice that it, it's, it, it was becoming apparent that they were accelerating Mac Jones' development by getting him more reps yesterday. So maybe they saw something on Monday in the rain that they liked because he got some more opportunities on Tuesday. And, and, and the thinking is it's just a matter of time before he's the guy. Right. The question is, does it happen at some point this year? Is it next year? When is it? But but Cam Newton is the short timer, and Mac Jones is the future. Yeah, definitely. There's no doubt. Uh, and and you know, it, it, the fact that we're hearing so much about Mac Jones out of a place where you never really hear anything, and other than the one day of interceptions when Cam hurt his hand, I mean, it's all been positive. I think you know speaks it speaks loudly to me. You just don't usually hear this kind of chatter out of New England. So he's obviously impressing some people. And this is an organization that does not want to play these type of quarterbacks or young players and just throw them out there to be like, here's your first round pick. We got to throw them out there. No, they make you earn it. They're not going to throw you out there until they know you're not going to mess it up for the rest of the football team. And, uh, you know, that, that also speaks to Mac Jones, and, and that's why it'll be hard for him to get out there, too, I think, just because of that trust factor. But that's why he was drafted at 15, and that's why I would have drafted him at number three because he's NFL ready and he's going to be ready to go when the time comes. It just is going to be better than Cam Newton. I, I'm going to say no. One of the developments from yesterday, and look, we react to the news that is in front of us. We're months away from games that count, so when there are practices and things occur, we pay attention to a Tonga Vailoa throwing 
throwing three interceptions in torrential rains caught our attention. So Dolphins fans should feel what about their team with Tua as the starting quarterback, Chris? I, I think a little – I'm, I'm going to say nervous is the word I'm going to use, and I don't mean that as in like, you know, just nervous as far as what you're going to get out of the quarterback, you know, position. We don't know. You know, again, last year it was basic, and I know it wasn't the greatest talent around him and all those type of things, but – you know, they really had to micromanage him big time. You know, it was that was that was their focal point when he came in. It's just, you know, let's not make him look bad. Let's make it as easy as possible. Let's not as put as much on his plate. Oh, wait, we're down. That's too much on his plate. Bring Ryan Fitzpatrick in. How can you not feel nervous? You know, now I get a lot of hate from down there because, you know, I don't rank him as the five best quarterbacks in football already. But, you know, yeah, there's question marks here. And to add to it, why I would be nervous, I'd go, we're, it's a damn good team. It's it's a good team. They're here. It's time. They're a playoff team, and he's the question mark. So that's why I say nervous. Well, and you know we've talked a couple of times about his admission from last month that yeah he didn't know the offense as well as he should right. have. And our first reaction was mm -hmm. it's refreshing that he was candid. And then and then we had the delayed reaction of. Well, wait a minute, if this was anybody else, he would have gotten killed for it. And now I'm kind of at the point where, okay, let's spin this forward. Why? Why did you not know it last year? Because I need to be concerned if you're going to know it this year. Are you going to know the game plan? Are you going to be comfortable with the audibles, the checks, all the things you need to know? Until we understand why he wasn't where he needed to be last year from the standpoint of understanding the offense, we can't have confidence he's going to understand it and know it this year, can we? No, I mean, you're, that's that's something, yeah. I think that's why, you know, but you can add that to why we. I said nervous. You're right. We don't know. What to, was, it, was it, you know, lack of understanding and being able to apply it on the football field? Or was it lack of, like, just quite understanding what it takes to be all in as the NFL starting quarterback? You know, so, yeah, it could be either one or something else. But – that, that is, I think, part of the process of what we're going to be evaluating with Tua here is like, yeah, the play on the field, but the look of the offense, isn't it? And is it opened up? Has it opened up? And because if it is opened up, then I think, well, you and I will go, well, it seems like they trust him a lot more. They're putting the ball. Like, there's that moment when you know, right? Like, like with quarterbacks. I can still remember, and we talked about this last year, too, where – hey, Josh Allen went to the playoffs in year two and it was pretty good and 20 touchdowns and six interceptions and those type of things. But you knew they were still kind of, even in that year, they were micromanaging him. They weren't going to let him be crazy. You know, they, they tried to play football a certain way. You remember last year, I think it was week two, they went down or maybe week three, the Miami Dolphins game. And it kind of started going back and forth, and you went, ooh, what's Buffalo going to do? They might be careful with Josh Allen here. They only have a four-point lead. They're not going to just let him sling it around, and they just let him keep throwing it and throwing bombs. And that's when I was like, whoa, Buffalo's at a different point with Josh Allen. It's official. It's not about managing him anymore. They ba basically said, no, forget managing it. You manage us. Here's the ball. Win the game for us. And those are the kind of clues I'll be looking for for, for Tua. On that same point from yesterday's news, the three interceptions in the torrential rains, throwing interceptions at practice in the rain when the coaches tell you to be aggressive, that was to his explanation, is what? A dicey situation. You know, it's a fine line of aggressive and stupidity of trying to make a throw when it's a torrential downpour. So, yeah, you'd like to be aggressive, but not aggressive to the point where, man, the ball's slippery as hell, it's raining hard as hell, it's windy. I think I could fit you know, this 30-yard throw in the hole between the safety and the corner in there. That's aggressively stupid. You're not going to get that done. But what they're saying, too, is also like, hey, if there's a 10-yard curl open and he's wide open, throw the freaking ball. Yeah, it's wet or whatever else, but don't just look for the check down and be like, oh, it's wet, let me look for the running back. You know, that, that, that's what we're looking for there. As Tua said, now's the time to make mistakes. And yeah. I keep thinking back to 2015, the breathless reporting of Marcus Mariota hadn't thrown an interception, hasn't thrown an interception, hasn't thrown an interception. Aaron Rodgers at that same training camp said, I want to throw interceptions because this is how we shape the zone, the target. I know who I can trust. I know what the window is. I learn it through training camp. Now is the time to make the mistakes and see what the limits of your abilities are so you can, yes. you can find the sweet spot when it's time to make those throws in the games that count.
Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.